Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, I warn you, I'm under the influence. Um, so don't shoot the messenger. That's what was coming through. Don't shoot the messenger. What does that mean? What, what's going to come out? I don't know because I'm under the influence of the divine. Uh, and my touch is very light. Everything just feels airy fairy. I'm not sure what you'll get out of me. Whether you'll get much sense. I'm not sure who's speaking through me, but I'm under the influence. There you go. I said this the other day. Now, I've had a couple of strange days. I don't, like, I'm quite void at the moment, so I don't really want to go into too much detail about what I've been experiencing. Just, uh, I was going to say pay attention or bear in mind that I'm under the influence. And um, the other day, a couple of days ago, I was speaking to Emily, I was a bit under the weather, poorly, and I was going to say to her, I feel so sick, and what came out was, I feel God, I was like, did I just say that, I feel God, so it kind of makes sense, everything's just light, when I stand up to walk, um, look, it is what it is, now I've got some cards here, we're using these cards, we've got postcard from Ladybird, postcards from Ladybird, Tarot of Sexual Magic, and you've got this. 100 inspiring quotes. So I've been drawn to come on to deliver a message, but don't shoot the messenger because I'm under the influence. Yeah, it's 1515. That's the devil number. <clears throat> my, this all went through my mind. It, I thought to myself, well, what am I under the influence of? It was like alcohol, the devil, Drugs, you're under the influence of the divine. Okay. Okay, so we're going to, you've got this. Life is the best gift. Enjoy it, it's happening. Don't, don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. We all have ability, the difference is how we use it. And wounds can become wisdom with the right perspective. The underlying energy. Impossible is just one person's opinion. We're going to work off of these. Life is the best gift. Let's go to the postcards from Ladybird. They are just postcards. Okay. Oh, that's what... Um, okay, I should tell you this. Because the Ladybird took me to, like, fly in home. Fly away home. And I thought, should... It was the feeling of, should I really go to work under this influence? Um, <clears throat> and it's like, it's okay, I'll go to work, they can always send me home. <laughs> <laughs> to the farm, <laughs> the funny farm. <laughs> okay. Interesting, because I feel like I want to cut the deck in half. And then, um, it's like this middle section we're going to be using. So we've got two quotes, inspiring quotes, then we have a combined quote, and then we have two more inspiring quotes. Because one person's opinion is that it's impossible. That's just one person's opinion. So we'll look at these cards. <clears throat> Life is the best gift. So what are you writing home about? Let's have a look. It will tell us. Don't shoot the messenger. <clears throat> You're writing home about tricks and magic. British, British birds. And Julius Caesar. And Roman Britain. Okay, so Britain's coming up a lot. Tricks and magic. You're writing home.
about tricks and magic. And we could use myself as an example, being like a, a British bird, lady, feminine, female, whatever you name you wish to put, um, towards my energy. <laughs> it's a second book of British birds and their nests. So someone, I say kind of, what have you been writing home about? You've been writing home about maybe igniting a flame. So I'm feeling the masculine's energy here. Julius Caesar. I don't know too much about Julius Caesar. And Roman Britain. It's an adventure from history. So life is the best gift. So this is really kind of um, what we're pulling out of the hat. Magic. Because it's learn about tricks and magic. Okay. Then we have the second book of, book of British birds. So I feel as if this is... Um, hmm. Not the first lady, the second lady in your life. Okay, and their nests. I feel like this is the Divine Feminine's energy. She should be the first lady, shouldn't she? Okay, not the second lady. So, this is a realisation. Because the Divine Feminine is in that world of tricks and magic, I feel extremely sick all of a sudden. Julius Caesar and Roman Britain. <clears throat> a ladybird book, an adventure from history. So, someone's telling a tale. I don't feel as if you're telling tales, as if you're lying. Maybe people think you might be lying uh, about the story you're telling. Sounds a bit magical. And I feel like the masculine here is uh, talking about the divine feminine. Okay. Now, this could be this other person here not believing the divine masculine. Now, this is interesting because this has been sent to me during the week is a video from a year ago uh, it's called a force to be reckoned with and it was like somebody needed to see evidence of uh, the truth I haven't really watched the video uh, but I know that it keeps coming keeps popping back up that video I mean it's got got about 17,000 views on it so it's the most viewed video of mine and it's been showing its head again a force to be reckoned with, um, and I believe the title is along the lines of uh, someone needs to see this to believe the divine masculine. So we have one person's opinion is it's impossible, as if um, they're lying, they're telling pals. Okay, it's impossible that you could, because I feel like they're talking about the actual feminine and about setting up home with them. So they're kind of like saying. It feels like the Divine Masculine is painting a very colourful picture because it says colour illustration by Alan W.C.B. Okay, but the book's actually by Brian Bessie Fitzgerald. You see as there's two guys here, it's like they've kind of stopped. They're having a chat uh, while the others are doing whatever they're doing in the background. So it's kind of like being on the lookout. I'm not sure whether or not uh, this... It's, it's a karmic energy, because in a way it's um, a karmic energy will in, encourage you um, normally to do the opposite. <laughs> so if somebody's kind of saying, I don't believe you, that you, know, you could set up home with this person, um, this feminine that the masculine's been chatting about, or it could be, that's a bit risky, think now before you kind of give up your life and go charging off after love. What do they know? <laughs> anyway, life is the best gift. So, Tricks and Magic, a second book of British, British birds and their nests. So I feel like this is setting up home again. A family. Uh, Julius Caesar and Roman Britain. And it's an adventure from history. Which kind of brings me in with the Divine Feminine because it's someone from the past that the Divine Masculine has already had a connection with, um, but not a commitment. Well, next it says enjoy it is happening. So, um, should we have a look at the Tower of Sexual Magic first before we move on? We can do that. Especially as it makes mention of uh, maybe teaching others the tricks of the trade. 
Okay, people are going to want to see evidence, Divine Masculine. You're illustrating a very nice, colourful um, image. Okay, Four of Chalices. What's going on here? So we're at the, um, the gate, the garden gate. Someone's going home. Are you being sent home? <laughs> If you don't tell the truth, you're going to have to go back in there. You have the scissors, you have the magnets, and you have your coin there. So you're having to cut something. I feel like this is the feminine warning you. You've got a black cloak on. It's like if you go back in there, you just keep repeating a cycle. You'll have to repeat the cycle, which is all that karma's about. It will keep showing its face until you've learnt the lesson. Okay. So the Four of Chalices is about being unhappy, stubborn, um, stubborn. Let's find out some more. So there's kind of no way um, around it apart from completing the cycle. Otherwise you just keep going around and around and around and attracting the same situation. You have the six of chalices. This is the divine feminine here. She's what's with the socks? Okay. She'll do your laundry. <laughs> She'll pair up your socks for you. Um I don't I'm not sure if they're a matching pair. Are they a matching pair? But the feminine is here looking at a portrait. And there's two little lovebirds that are kissing right by her ankle. Okay. Um, what's coming through is about ankle biting. So I felt as if nipping at one another because I felt um, the socks were not a pair. So this could be impossible is just one person's opinion is maybe someone's just kind of throwing it in there that are you sure that this is a match for you? But the femi I don't feel it's the feminine that's uh, contemplating this. I feel like it's the masculine. Is this a true match? Is this really what you're wanting? Or are you going to be, well, let's say, nitpicking at each other's like kind of little dogs and napping at each other's like ankles but the six of chalices is about remembering the lovely moments okay. not focusing on uh should we say disagreements or where you felt maybe you were nitpicking at one another that was just for your own personal growth when it comes to the divine masculine and divine feminine um you two are the ones who would trigger the most out of each other okay via this so-called nitpicking. Is it nitpicking or nitpicking? <laughs> if it's nitpicking, you're pulling all like the, the head lice out of, mm, like a monkey. A monkey would go through their partner's head or their children's head, don't they? Let's not talk about the kids and nits. But <laughs> going through like that. <laughs> I've seen it. Okay, they take care of um, each other. Okay, they take care of like the bugs. Okay. Enjoy it, it's happening. I'm still working on this deck of cards. This deck of card, cards. Enjoy it, it's happening, I'm still working on this card. I've only just begun this card. It's only just begun. Enjoy it, it's happening. What are the words to that song? Oh, I can't check it out because I've got my phone on charge in the other room. Okay. Enjoy it, it's happening. Gas. The public services, gas. That took me to someone feeling quite gassy as if um, they were quite nervous. Pooping their pants in a way, I don't know. I feel quite gassy. Acid reflux. Um... This is clearing out the systems, your pipe work, 
that's what I feel has been going on with me. I've had a, a dose of it all. And um, all being flushed through. <clears throat> so that's what it's taken me to. Also, the get up and go. It's like having the fuel, the ignition. Okay. To fuel the ignition, enjoy it, it's happening. We're filling up. I read that backwards, like sag. Sag. Let's find out some more about this. Enjoy it, it's happening. I'm filling up my tank, okay? <clears throat> Get the engine going now. And you've got printing processes. Well, okay, what else is going on? Lots. <laughs> Are you having your car trouble? <laughs> printing process. What's that about? Enjoy it, it's happening. Extra, extra. Read all about it. How it works. Mm. Okay. Look at the eyes here. They look like the Mona Lisa eyes. She was quite miserable, wasn't she? I don't. I don't reckon she was miserable. I just don't think that she really smiled. I feel that's the kind of face the Mona Lisa face today I have. Okay. Try and get a smile out of her. I don't mean to. I'm under the influence. Okay. Some eyes here eyeing you up. Okay, what are you doing up there? That takes me to like a remote control. I don't know, that's all a bit too technical for me. Leave it with the men. Okay, it's a man's job. Easy reading. How it works, printing processes. We're processing something. Enjoy it, it's happening. Let's go to the tarot of sexual magic. A little ladybird there. <laughs> Am I being sent home? Is enough to look. Don't shoot the messenger. I don't know what I've said that's out of line. I haven't said anything that's out of line. Okay. Little ladybird. All living outside. Oh, I can hear a siren. <laughs> We're getting ready to move in. We have the Six of Wands. Okay, now the Six of Wands, before we focus on what's going on in the image, um, it's about returning home, feeling worthy. There's no other, no other, no other else. There's no other else. There's no one else. There's no other way to um, describe that card. Now, he's come off his farm. The funny farm. Or oh, he's entering into the funny farm with you. You've got the dove here, you've got a little rabbit. You've got some goats in the background. And here's the Divine Masculine. And he wants to, well, he wants to touch your ass. There's no other way of like... He wants it. Okay. I feel like that's a honey pot there. There is honey. Enjoy it, it's happening. Ooh la la. Right, now, don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. I felt like this was a combined message, so let's have a look. <clears throat> we shall take one card from here, and then I'm going to go over to the other deck. The other half. We'll go to the other half and see what they want to say. <laughs> it's snappy. Mm. Okay, beaky, greedy dog. Don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. So on this side, being greedy, look. Are you being greedy? Do your um, desires sound greedy because you want it all? Um, what did this take me to? Um, not the ugly duckling, mother goose. Okay. 
So I really feel as if the masculine, whoever he's talking to, or whatever he's contemplating, whatever he's processing, it's an image in his mind. He could be sharing this. I feel like he might have shared it with one other. Um, because he's trying to teach others the tricks of the trade. Okay, and it all comes in, doesn't it? Yes. So uh, spirituality will assist you on all your endeavours. So you have to have an element of spiritual, <clears throat> a spiritual nature within you. Okay. Just to even want for others what one wants for themselves. Now that's interesting. Want for others what you want for yourself. What is it that you want for yourself? So this is a mother goose. And the energy was, you wait and see. Because enjoy it, it's happening. You will see how, and it's very much about how um, people flock to you, Divine Feminine. It's about your nature. I'm talking about you and uh, your nest. Your life, I feel. Beaky, the greedy duck. On this side, we have garden flowers. It feels like wherever you are, things just grow. Okay, so it's about actually realising that you are the asset, Divine Feminine. So don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. Because it's all the good good when the Divine Feminine is around. So don't let another uh, put the impossible into you. When you know um, well and truly that you are possible and this is possible for you. Okay. Should we get some uh, sexual magic cards? Let's do it. Don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. Feels like someone might be trying to put the fear factor into you. Into you, the fear factor. Mm. The Krypton factor. Kryptonite. You can drain your energy. Superman's energy. Kryptonite does. Okay, don't get too close. Let's have a look. So don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. We've got the Ten of Swords. Interesting. We have the feminine here who's crying because she um, has this image now of the two of you together. And her reality is um, it feels well, the energy felt a bit snappy over here. So, this could be the divine feminine being a bit snappy, where she's kind of the cups dropped over the ace of cups, the sword of resurrection is down. She's had a good reflect, reflect, she's had a good reflect in the mirror. Oh, I can't show you, I haven't got my phone. Um, I don't know, my, what is it, what, what's it called, um, your day at a glance, <laughs> my glance at a day, said something about looking in the mirror, anyway, she had some reflection time and she's cut cords here, and I feel like she's, she's actually turned her head away, um, from you, Divine Masculine, and you're kind of free here to do what you want and to create your own picture. So she's not aware that the picture that you're creating actually involves her. Okay. I was going to say she's self-pleasuring, like she's purging. Um, her pulling on her breast here, this could be the flushing through, because I said that I felt like earlier last week that my breasts had got kind of bigger, and it felt like the feeling I had when more when I gave birth and my milk actually come through and there has been a birthing that's uh, that's occurred this week as in the feminine has kind of um, birthed her divine masculine and it does feel like the story's over to you now divine masculine mm. ten of swords now, it's normally with the masculine who's down with all the swords in his back, but I don't feel that you are down, Divine Masculine. It feels like the feminine's down. Okay. So you're talking about her behind her back. About how wonderful she is, but does she look in a, 
a state of um, actually believing that or feeling that. Okay, ten of swords. And this come out with, don't let the fear of what could happen stop anything from happening. Also, Divine Feminine, don't allow yourself to get into uh, too much of a deep state of you uh, believing that you know, that you know it all. No one knows it all. And that then brings me over to we all have ability, the difference is how we use it. And feminines are very known for focusing on wanting love, romance, uh, a partner who does talk about her, um, who is proud of her. Where are we going with this? Oh, how we use the abil our abilities. Okay. And the masculines have a completely different approach, which you should be aware of now. Does it mean that you're right and he's wrong? No. Hmm. You're your right and his wrong. That's interesting. So even though it might feel as if you're wrong for him, he knows that you are right for him. Not right, but it's not you saying that you're wrong for him, Divine Feminine. It's either the Divine Masculine in his own mind, which would be his ego talking, he's talking to his higher self, will be setting the record straight, or he's talking to another. Okay. Because this is the image that you have pictured, Divine Feminine. Okay. Let's have a look at this um, ability then. We all have ability, the difference is how we use it. Puppies and kittens, there's a difference, they don't normally get, well I don't know if puppies and kittens get on when they grow up, they don't think they get on do they too much, not that I've seen, anyway, everyone gets along when we're younger, something happens doesn't it, especially through like adolescence, teenage years, it's like there's a big separation when the boys' voices start to get really low and that's normally a few years after the divine, fem or divine feminine, but there you go. Use it as an analogy. <clears throat> you remember what it was like? I went to an all-girls secondary school, but um, when I was in junior school, before the age of, you know, 11, um, I was very much best friends with boys, girls, didn't even notice that there was a difference, there needed to be a difference. You kind of accepted each other. Girls would be off doing their hopscotch, playing their girly games, and the boys would be playing football and doing what boys do, running around <clears throat> like lunatics, acting immature until like they catch up about two, three years after uh, feminines, after um, the girls go through their transformation and they mature. Boys are a few years behind, aren't they? And it's like we forget about that and we get older, and we could tolerate them so much more, couldn't we, in our youth. <laughs> Don't get snappy with um, your differences. So we all have the ability, the difference is how we use it. Black and white now. You, Divine Feminine, the cat here, being balanced in your masculine feminine energy, feminine standing tall here over the masculine being the black pussy cat, and then you've got your doggy here, look, he's all chained up. He can't go far, he's always called home. And he's learning, look, he's black splodges all over him. Okay, is he in the doghouse? You're not in the doghouse, it's the feminine in the doghouse. Divine feminine, if you put the divine masculine into the doghouse, okay, that's not good. <laughs> if you feel the need to do that, then put yourself in the doghouse for thinking like that, or wanting to even do that. So we all have ability, the difference is how we use it. <clears throat> knave of Wands, so he's being brave. He's being brave, the Knave is being brave. I feel like you've had time to grow, because look how long your hair is. That takes years to get your hair that length. Okay. He very much does respect you and value you and sees your growth. He's just um, 
doing what masculines do. It takes them a while to catch up, to catch on, to get the message. So, the knave of wands, he wants passion. I said he wants to kind of have a touch. He wants to touch you, feel it. It feels as if, like, he can't quite believe that this is real, so he just wants to remind himself and touch it, just to see whether or not it is an illusion. Well, we have wounds can become wisdom. I don't know why on earth I'm like, that's like I'm putting my arm on someone's shoulders and saying, hey, it's all good. Calm down. It's like <laughs> I'm comforting someone on the arm of this, well, it's on the, the top of this chair. Wounds can become wisdom with the right perspective. Okay. Um, nothing's really shouting out that I can translate. Uh, Tower of sexual magic first. We can do that. Wounds, wounds can, so it doesn't say they will, it says wounds can become wisdom with the right perspective. And I believe the right perspective, perspective is we all have ability, the difference is how we use it. And it's a beautiful card. I've already been shown this today. I was speaking to original and she showed me this card because she said it came up in her reading. Okay, three of pentacles. There's no place like home. Home sweet home. Wisdom. It doesn't say wisdom. Wisdom can become wisdom. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Divine feminine, you're transmuting your wisdom. It just takes a while. Okay. Wounds, it can become wisdom with the right perspective. Something about playing with like the uh, wooden spoon. That's what I feel like. Wooden spoon. You've been waiting, like playing a tune on the on the pots and pans. I don't know what any of this means, pots and pans. Probably come in with the nursery rhyme, ladybird, ladybird, fly away home, your house is on fire, your children all gone, except for one, her name is Anne, and she is under the frying pan. Okay. So let's have a look at this, um, we're, still, we're still on the wounds, <clears throat> we haven't pulled a ladybird card. You will forget, if, when you're in each other's arms, you are aware that you both will forget about <clears throat> uh, what seemed to be apparent in the separation, once you're through that veil of illusion regarding the separation, understanding that everything needed to happen just the way that it did, hence why it has happened that way, is happening that way. So it's like there's no other way that this could have occurred. A, B, C. A, B, C. Easy as one, two, three. Do, Re, Mi, A, B, C. It's really interesting because um, <clears throat> original showed me that card and um, I had the ladybird cards out and uh, the abacus come up one two three so a b c one two three do you see what's with all this uh, black ink I feel the cat's knocked it over okay I actually feel that's the ink that you might need to process Ink you need to process, yeah, maybe. Okay, ink takes me to tattoos. So you need to process the tattoos. Okay. So you may find what you're looking for on Uncle Mac. On your Mac? Have you got a Mac? Okay, Uncle Mac's Ladybird ABC book, Uncle Max. Look out for signs. There's definitely uh, signs coming that are written. Okay. Where you'll find these, uh, you will be shown. Helps you to process anyway. A, B, C. It's easy. It's, it's the energy of A, B, C. <clears throat> it's easy when you follow me. Okay. Easy as one, two, three. Watch. Should we get another one? We can get another one. And we have Oliver Cromwell. I don't know much about Oliver Cromwell either. Okay. Julius Caesar and Oliver Cromwell. Well, you look a lot um, 
I was going to say smarter, but that's not really the case. You just look completely different. So I feel like Divine Masculine, when you're returning <clears throat> to your Divine Feminine, you're coming across as being a completely different character to what she um, <clears throat> has known before. Okay. This will take me to the Six of, uh, the six of Wands. When I said that's just somebody returning home, they've grown, they, they're more mature, they know what they're wanting, indecision has gone, and they're taking decisive action. Okay, on your masculine horse heel, good to see. Bottom of the deck here. <clears throat> now we've got the Knight of Swords. Is he the knight? He is the knight. He's the knight in shining armour. He comes in to save the day and uh, claim what he's wanting. Okay, taking charge. Ink. It's just the blackness of. Uh, are they bin bags? Looks like you've got a diaper on. That's <clears throat> where you're storing all your gas. Oh. Bit of a shoulder. Shoulder ache. Got shoulder ache. Or we shrugging. Should we? Um, I feel like I'm going to be keeping this quite brief. Let's get a Rooney message. So you're not to shoot the messenger, and I feel that could actually not be referring to me. I said I haven't said anything that's out of line, that's out of alignment. So don't shoot the messenger if that's your divine masculine coming in. Don't shoot him. If you do, you need to put yourself in the doghouse. Don't put him in the doghouse. You need to be uh, more understanding, Divine Feminine. Understand the difference between masculine and feminines and how we operate. Because there's a vast difference. doesn't mean that you can't blend together and come together in perfect harmony. But you need to be able to see how it could happen. How all of this has happened. Let's finish with a Rumi card. We have a rise. That's card number 13, which takes me to the energy of the death card. Wings of hope languish from lack of use. When wings dissipate and weaken, life begins to lose its value. Every cell in your body is created to rise to challenges. Your life is meant to confront everything that holds hold you capture. Don't sit at the bottom of the well, not caring about salvation. Listen to the voice within calling to you. Reach for, em for imminence beyond your own maturity. Boom. Now this takes me to the Divine Feminine when I said about it's normally the Divine Masculine in this energy. But clearly not today. So reach for imminence beyond your own maturity. And all of a sudden I feel like the Divine Masculine is a grown spirit. He's shot up. I dance before you in sacred spectacle, hoping to garner your attention. Look at me, I cry to your alien spirit and despondent flesh. Look at me. If you were to look up, you would see that I am a mirror of your own being, your light, your heart, your spirit, your all. Yes, there is pain. Yes, there is a letting go taking place. And you are frightened and uncertain sometimes. But you make this mean something that it does not. It means that you are to turn your head away from what is dying. Do this gently but firmly. Turn your head towards what is living. Look at me, I will show you truth, and you shall laugh your deepest belly laughter with so much glee, sharing in my secret that the only force at work in your life is unconditionally loving divinity. I see in you a divine wild child and sacred heart. You have gumption, chapel, guts. You dare to laugh where others only see pain. You dare to believe that everything will somehow work out, where others see only what they judge to be wrong. You see love, 
where others ply fear. You seek freedom where the world still buys into manipulation and propaganda. <clears throat> My heart's beating really, really fast. Don't lose heart, beloved wild child. Dare to believe. You are right to do so. It is the divine rebel in you that refuses to surrender hope. Give up the fight, perhaps, the battle that comes from a place of fear, but never give up your hope. That hope in your heart, that optimism and patience for growth into love creates a light within you that helps the world see through darkness. It becomes a candle that shimmers contentedly upon the windowsill of your heart temple. There it is, more obvious, even in darkness. The stars do appear to shine brighter at night, beloved, but don't become consumed by your nightmares. They will pass with the coming dawn, you'll see. Don't give them too much stock. Instead, put your attention towards that defiant candle of hope that burns, as, it, as is its nature and purpose within you. Can you sense its warmth? even in the presence of cold fear. Ah, it shall warm you now, and if not, then I come to remind you, you are a blazing angel. You are filled with holy fire, and you shall prevail. Oh, the joy of you, the expanse of you. You will, you will, you fill my own heart with your magnificent essence. I see and know the great beloved in you. There the great beloved is, looking out at me from behind your eyes. I see the candle light of your heart temple flicker within your grace. That is what the candle of hope honours, the workings of the great beloved, so creative and crazed with love for you, that all circumstances of your life, down to the tiniest detail, are evoked out of love. Love out of, pa love out of passionate desire, takes you from despair into hope, from holding on to letting go, from turning away to opening up, so the great beloved takes so the great beloved takes you across the moonlit ocean into the temple of the cosmic heart. Here an eternal flame burns brightly with hope, igniting the light within the hearts of all of humanity. <clears throat> Three gulps that one took. <laughs> you are being asked to trust, to gently lay to rest the suffering that has been, perhaps because of what you have labelled as the failure, the doubt, the losses and setbacks. There are so little, they are so little in the greater scheme of you. Put them aside, allow them to rot and become fertiliser for life, but do not try to keep them alive beyond their earthly expiry date, lest your lest you become tainted or poisoned by the rot. Let them go and instead focus on what is alive now. Can you sense that before you is a great being of light, a greater pathway opening up? This is truth, blazing angel, this is truth. Take the step. So easy is it when the light of the heart is felt within, reminding you of your own divine nature. The world is here for you to experience, so that you may realise divinity in its majesty, mystery and love, more so than ever. All serves that sacred purpose, so embrace it. Find your faith, be at peace. Know that no matter what appears to be, all is well. I've been told that quite a few times today in the last reading that come out um, <clears throat> consecutively. About five times I said it. All is well. You are so loved it cannot even begin to be translated sufficiently into words, but it can be transmitted from my heart to yours, just as the sun catches dry tinder and sets it aflame. This oracle comes with a message for you. Arise. You have been downtrodden for long enough now. Perhaps you have been feeling defeated, put upon, underestimated, or walked over in mind, body, or spirit by others, or your own doubts and fears. Enough now. You are liberated through the hope in your heart, the defiant optimism that buoys your spirit 
and demands that you shall have your dawn. You shall rise like the sun and begin anew now. Step up. It is your time. Wow. I feel like I want to leave you with something else. I feel the enchanted man. <clears throat> okay, where else is that deck? I feel that there's a confusion about not knowing who should be doing what. Um, you will know. It will become clear. It's kind of like step up now. It's like, who are you talking to? <laughs> You'll know. And if you don't know, then it will come to you. 35. Okay, education, it's in reverse. Picked up the stubborn energy here. Um, with the thought, my ears have like become all muffled. Here, here's the stubborn energy. Okay, so stubbornness and the desire to know it all and be right no matter what will not get you what you want. Or could it be that you're afraid to be seen by someone who knows less than you're supposed to? Could you be flying through life by the seat of your pants, hoping no one else? Hoping no one else? Okay, this is interesting. Show me your pants. I can see them here. Could you be flying through life by the seat of your pants? And then I said, hoping... No one else will notice you're skimming the surface of things. So the divine masculine is very aware and he knows that you know that he is uh, <laughs> skimming the surface of things. Life is filled with lessons, some bitter, some sweet. A strident loss for certainty will never bring you the wisdom you seek. Pretending to know more than you, than you do, pretending to know more than you do won't make you wise. Be assured that not knowing is a magical place to be. All manner of mysteries are revealed. Be open. It's okay not to know. Perfect. I will catch up with you. I will catch up with you tomorrow. Okay. Until then, take care. Much love. Bye for now.